Hey, everybody. You are about to hear a brief retelling of the movie Five Nights at Freddy's. Enjoy the movie. A security guard at an abandoned pizzeria is haunted at night by creepy reanimated mechanical monsters. The movie, based on a series of video games, begins in the night guard's gatehouse. He's not vigilant about looking at crossword puzzles, but with bloody fingers he unscrews a bolt from the ventilation grate, but not to put it to work at all. The guard climbs into the vent gut while barricading the materials in. Something breaks in the door. Climbing out of the storeroom, he accidentally scuffs a chair, attracting attention, but he steps out into the hallway anyway and runs for the exit. The lights go out traitorously as he reaches the locked door, which is where the mysterious stalker catches up with him. The guard regains consciousness chained to a chair, a mask similar to John Kramer's mechanism approaching his face. The guard tries to unscrew the bolt from the handhold, but fails. The steel machine puts an end to his efforts to escape. The camera floats smoothly over the hall of a pizzeria, one of the walls of which is decorated with children's drawings of local celebrity animatronics, including a yellow rabbit. Next comes a pixelated splash screen with credits, during which a devious civilian type puts on a yellow bunny costume to attract the children's attention. One by one he takes them away with him before the credits end. In the next scene the alarm clock will be Mike, who in turn will be Abby's younger sister to take her to school before work. Mike works as a security guard at the mall, engrossed in books on conscious dreaming techniques during his breaks. While standing in line for coffee, he notices a lonely boy being led away by an angry man. A furious Mike punches the kidnapper with all his might. In the next scene, Mike sits for an interview and tries to get a job. His employment history includes a stint in the Hunger Games, and it's not easy to find a new job with a resume like that. Manager Steve, who's a young man who's had a miscarriage of justice, gives him a second chance. A low-paying position as a night security guard. But he turns it down. At home, Mike faces an eviction notice and a nanny, Max, who he can't pay. In addition, his sister prefers socializing with imaginary friends and drawing. Mike practices meditation and nourishes himself to calm down before bed. As a child, he and his family were on a picnic when his younger brother, whom he was told to look after, was kidnapped by a stranger. Mike tries to chase him down, but to no avail. The next day Aunt Jane wants to take Abby away from him under her care, threatening the court and lawyers. The educator tells the man that his sister loves him more than his aunt and recommends him to find a job first. Under the pressure of circumstances, Mike calls Steve and accepts a job as a watchman. In the evening, he goes to the first shift in the buried pizzeria at Freddy Fazbear's. Mike's task is to stupidly sit out the night, looking into the CCTV monitors so that no one gets on the private property that the owner for some reason jealously guarded from demolition and sale. At the site, Mike turns on the power and looks at the outdated manual on the obsolete video equipment. He makes his duty rounds in passing appreciating the extent of the children's artwork on the wall. Mike reaches the stage where the stars of the establishment, the anthropomorphic animatronic beasts, reside behind a curtain. Led by Freddy Bear. By the end of his tour of duty, Mike falls asleep and has a dream about his brother's kidnapping, but new details emerge in the finale. Five small children are behind him, scurrying away from the man. In an attempt to catch up with one, Mike stumbles in the dream and falls off the chair in reality just like the hero of Nolan's beginning. Back home, he asks Max to wait with the payment, not realizing that she's been talking to her brother Hank and Aunt Jane. The plan is for Hank and his buddies to break into the pizzeria and wreak havoc. Mike gets fired, and then it's easier for Aunt Jane's lawyer to strip him of custody of Abby. Mike goes to Freddy's for a second night. He again has a dream about his brother being kidnapped. This time, he runs after another cub, but at the last moment he dodges and scratches the man's shoulder with a hook that sticks out instead of an arm. Mike wakes up and notices the cut in reality, as if Freddy was dealing with the wrong one. Then the alarm sounds. A police car lurks insidiously outside. At the door is Officer Vanessa, noticing the wound, she offers help causing a sense of burning envy of all the guys on whom so simply girls did not hang. 
The girl tells him that all the guards are promptly dismissed from this position. The diner itself was shut down when five children disappeared in it, whose bodies were never found. She also takes him to the hall where she celebrated birthdays as a child and includes a performance of animatronics, Freddie Fazbear, and his musical gang. In the morning, Mike and Vanessa drive around. In the afternoon, when the building is unguarded, Hank and his friends break in. Leaving Max waiting in the car, they smash everything inside, making a mess and taking change out of the arcade machines. One of the thugs stumbles across a nightmare animatronic cupcake in a drawer. Partnered with Chick Chick, the two of them attack the troublemaker. The fat man from the gang, hearing his comrade's screams, notices a huge chicken in the kitchen who looks at him as if the question of who is the rooster is already solved. Hank sees on the monitor as his frightened accomplice locks himself in the back room, but another animatronic lurks inside. All that remains of the thief is a bloody stain on the glass in the spirit of the unforgettable scene from Titanic. I don't want that, Hank realizes, and hides in the observation room. He sees on the monitor as the animatronics come to life and launch a birthday cupcake into the vent. He tries to break the grate, but Hank defends himself. The thief goes out into the corridor where he sees another monster in the flickering light. Tired of waiting, Max goes to the pizzeria and notices a dark-haired boy. Chasing him leads her to a warehouse where parts are stored. There stands Freddy the robot from which comes the boy's voice. Max comes closer and sees the child's hand inside, but his attempt to reach it ends with the mechanical jaws biting it in half. Such an injustice. In the morning, Abby finds adoption papers in her desk drawer that will make her guardian her hated Aunt Jane. She curses when Vanessa rings the doorbell. The pizza place shows signs of forced entry and Mike's forgotten pills. Inviting a guest to the local stink river, the guy confesses he's practicing conscious dreaming using pharmacology and meditation to remember all the details of his younger brother's kidnapping and find the culprit. Going to Freddy's for the third night, Mike is forced to take Abby with him. Missing Max doesn't answer her cell phone. Having built a fort of blankets for the girl, the man puts the pizzeria in order after a visit to the anonym network and himself lies down to meditate. At this time, Abby wakes up and is let's walk. She approaches the stage where the animatronics stand and calls them. From the darkness of the backstage, Freddy is coming. In his dream, Mike sees a boy who asks him to help identify his brother's kidnapper. Without saying anything, he wakes up from Abby's scream. She is standing in a circle of animatronics. Mike rushes at them with a stool, but it turns out that his sister has befriended them. She introduces him to all the members of the musical metal gang. The terrified guard wants to leave and Abby leaves her drawing. The mechanoids love them very much. In parting, the girl thanks them for playing with her and hugs Freddy. Back home, Mike analyzes his sister's drawings. Lately, they've been focusing less on him and more on the five kids with the notorious animatronic elements. Hat, ears, hook. During the day, he talks to Abby and finds out that the kids he's dreaming about are the ones in her drawings. They're ghosts controlling the animatronics. Abby also drew the last moment Mike saw his kidnapped brother through the back window of a car. He asks his sister to convince the ghosts to help him find the kidnapper. On the fourth night at the pizzeria, Mike brings Abby in and finds Vanessa there. It turns out that the policewoman is aware of the peculiarities of the establishment, but did not say anything to the guard. Abby wants to build a big fort, forcing the robots to build walls of tables and the adults to find a blanket. Abby Nadir's laurels are not resting on her shoulders. Retrieving the blanket from under a sokka, Mike finds an animatronic. Vanessa, using a fictional symbol in the form of a mop, shows that the inside is full of dangerous mechanisms that can harm a person if handled carelessly. Back in the hall, they see Abby electrocuted by Bonnie's electric guitar, even though the girl is unharmed. Vanessa asks Mike not to bring her here anymore, at least until she gets her electric welder's license. Mike goes to Aunt Jane's house to give Abby to her, but the girl rightly sees this as a betrayal and locks herself in her room, forcing her relative to wait. The brother at this time goes to work, where he sleepwalks with ghosts, who guarantee that he will be able to see his family every night. But in return they demand Abby, and Mike, 
as it happens in the case of cell phone operators, accidentally expressing consent cannot cancel the moral payment. The security guard wakes up chained to a chair. They try to trap him in Freddy's spare suit. The man manages to pull out a bolt loosened by the previous guard, who generously lays to rest the plans of the juvenile poltergeists. Once out of the trap, he stumbles across the corpses of the robbers that no one has ever found. He breaks for the exit when the screen casts a shadow over his pursuer. Abby continues her silent boycott of Aunt Jane, leaving her niece in the room. The aunt sits down to watch TV, unaware that Freddie Menelik has come for her. He calls the girl with him, pretending that the aunt just fell asleep. The animatronic even calls a cab. Mike wakes up in the police vault where Vanessa brought him. He tells her that the maniac hid the bodies of the missing children inside the animatronics. So their spirits are controlling them for a reason, and she also admits that the maniac who killed the children was not only a clever criminal, but also her father. While Abby hangs out at the pizza place with her new friends, her older brother sneaks in through the vent. As usual, he forgets to pay off the hard nut. He sneaks to the edge of the stage using Vanessa's tridentro route to avoid being spotted by a gunless machine. Noticing his sister Mike remembers Vanessa's advice that electric shock short-circuit the mechanical skeletons for a while. He pours a bucket of water onto the stage at Freddy and Bonnie's feet, after which he fires a taser at the liquid. The conductivity of the water plays a bad trick on the mechanical goons and they fall. Chica leads Abby to a storage room where a spare animatronic lies. Chick grabs the girl to put her inside the mechanical torso and turn her into one of them, but Mike shows up just in time to electrocute her a second time. The brother and sister run down the hallway toward the exit, but they are chased by Korzik and not the one from Sesame Street. He grabs Mike's leg while the last surviving animatronic, Foxy Foxy, comes in pursuit of the hidden abbeys. She skillfully uses the folds of the terrain to evade the robot. Vanessa saves Abby from her pursuer at the last moment. When Mike goes out to find his sister, he stumbles upon a new animatronic, a yellow rabbit. He is not affected by the electric discharge of the Azer, and he is faster than the other mechanisms. It turns out that inside sits a maniacal child criminal who kidnapped Mike's brother. He again awakens animatronics to destroy the guard. Mike is interceded by Vanessa, the maniac's daughter. Threatening with a gun, she forces the yellow rabbit to take off his mask. Underneath is the manager, Steve. The daughter shoots at her father, but is hit by the armor. While Steve strangles Vanessa, Mike comes to his senses and realizes how to turn the ghosts against the criminal. He tells Abby to draw a picture of what really happened to them. Instead of a lying doodle where the yellow rabbit is their friend. When Abby hangs the drawing on the wall, Steve goes to her, trying to hold him back Vanessa gets stabbed in the stomach. Mike points the lamp at the drawing where the yellow rabbit nails the children and the ghosts remember what happened to them. They surround the maniac emanating in impotent anger before the cupcake attacks him. The animatronic mechanism shrinks, breaking the maniac's insides. Before he dies, he puts on a mask, promising to return. Just like Carlson. Wild, but cute. Escaping from the pizzeria, people see the animatronics dragging the maniac into the depths. Abby's doing well in school with her peers. Back home with Mike, they argue about what they're having for dinner. On the way, they stop to visit Vanessa. She is in a coma after being wounded. At home over dinner, the girl worries about the ghosts of her friends, suggesting that they visit them sometime. Mike looks at her and says that anything can happen. The camera pulls further and further away. In the next scene, the ghost of a blonde-haired boy watches the agony of a maniac in a yellow bunny suit. The boy closes the door and the movie ends.